Raids on currency dealers have become common. The Naira dropped about a couple of weeks ago to almost hitting 900 Naira. Prices began to rise, and by the end of 2008, inflation had reached 79 billion percent a month. 200 billion dollars. Just two weeks into the new year, and the rand has lost 6.5% already. Well, the Ghanaian CD plunged to an all-time low against the dollar on Monday. Then I said, God, where are we heading to? Losing 60% of its value. They lost our entire foreign exchange reserve. Prices in shops would go up several times a day. This is a serious situation. Out of control inflation and a depreciating currency. We are tired of this uh, suffering. Uh, it, it, it's scary. And it's expected to get worse. I have a view. This video is going to be about how the US dollars destroy the economies of poor countries. To understand why many countries of the world, not just Africans, are looking for alternative to dollars, we have to first understand what America as a country is benefiting from having a currency that is desired by everybody in the world and is being used by everybody as reserve currency. According to Brandon Gill, the, the author of The Death of a Nation, uh, the primary thing America as a nation is benefiting from having its currency as the world reserve currency is the fact that that currency can keep on remaining stronger and stronger while other currencies of the world become weak and weaker. Because the, the US dollar is the, the sort of preeminent currency around the world, other countries, other central banks, other investors, other businesses around the world want US dollars. So what does that mean? That means that the dollar is worth more than other currencies, which makes it cheaper for us to import goods. That reduces prices in the U.S., which raises the standard of living in the U.S. Let me explain how this happens with a simple illustration. Now, imagine you are America. Like every other countries of the world, you are having a currency. We call it dollars. However, unlike every other country of the world, your currency, that is dollar, is needed by most countries of the world. Uh, thousands and thousands and probably hundreds of thousands of businesses and uh, individuals all around the world need your currency directly or indirectly, which means there is high demand for your currency. Now, because everybody in the world need your currency and there is high demand for your currency, it means the value of your currency will always be higher than most currencies of the world. Now, pay attention to this. Because the value of your currency is higher than that of most countries of the world, it means you can import things from several places in the world at cheaper rates than almost anybody else in the world. Which is the reason why you see companies like Apple, you know, having their factories in China, and in recent days, they are having it in India. It is because, you know, labor, raw materials, services, and virtually every other thing American need could be cheaper from countries like India, China, or Africa. Later in this video, we are going to talk about several other benefits America or Americans are deriving from having their currency as the world reserve currency. However, for now, I want us to look at the opposite side of this equation I just gave you. For a moment, I need you to pretend that you are one of the countries in Africa. Uh, let's say you are Nigeria. Yeah, like every other country in the world, you have to import uh, probably many of the things you, as a government and citizen of your country, need. Uh, which is the reason why you are one of the countries that are fighting for dollars in this illustration. Now, there is a problem, uh, a big problem. 
Because as a country, Nigeria had most of its income in its currency, that is Naira. And of course, all of its citizens earn their revenue or income in the local currency, which is Naira. It means anytime you want to import anything outside the country, you have to change your Naira to dollars. Okay, now, I don't want you to forget what I show you here. Because everybody in the world is fighting for dollar every minute of the day, it means the value of dollar is going to be increasing every minute of the day against your local currency, that is Naira. As the value of dollar keep on increasing against the value of your local currency, it means the buying power of your citizen keep on dropping and inflation, you know, keep on rising until you get to a point when your country is experiencing crazy, unbelievable inflation. Ghana's economy has been crippled by the impact of the COVID pandemic, rampant inflation, the war in Ukraine, plus a depreciating currency. Our capitals are um, getting eroded uh, rather fast. There's now a new finance minister. Now analysts are warning that the country is close to a crisis. In conclusion, adding America US dollar as a reserve currency or the trade currency of a poor country means that as the value of US dollar increases, which is going to be happening every minute of the day against the local currency, it means the value of the local currency is going to be decreasing and the buying power of the people of that country is going to be depreciating and you are going to get to a point where people in your country are not able to afford common basic things. In September of 2011, the Central Bank Governor of Nigeria traveled to China to go and meet the officials in the uh, Chinese government and discuss how they are going to uh, convert a part of Nigerian foreign reserve to the Chinese yuan. Nigeria's central bank governor Lamida Sunusi is currently in Beijing, China, and has some big news for us. Uh, governor, governor uh, what's the reason for your trip? You know, uh, we came here basically as part of our, uh, our effort to diversify our external reserves. You recall that a year ago we took a decision that would like to hold some of our reserves in the renminbi. And I just finished a meeting with the governor of the People's Bank of China and signed an MOU, and we're taking the major step now um, towards um, that um, in, in that direction. In January of 2016, Zimbabwe announced that it's going to start using the Chinese yuan as part of its foreign reserve and its trade currency with China. This 2014 publication by the United Nations show how. Chinese yuan is already penetrating African countries. Zimbabwe recently announced that it would change to the Chinese yuan as its reserve currency. And in 2018, this report shows that at least 14 African countries are already contemplating using Chinese yuan for their foreign reserve or for the trade with the Chinese government. At this point in the video, you might want to ask why Chinese Yuan, I mean, why not other currencies of the world like British Pound or any other currency in the world? To really understand the reason why African countries could be moving in the direction of the Chinese Yuan, uh, we have to understand what countries of the world need currency for. Basically, countries of the world need currency for two things. Uh, number one is trade, that is what you import and what you export. And the second thing is debt, that is who you borrow from and the currency you use to pay your debts. With these two understanding, then you can have a look at this chart. This chart represents the bilateral trade between the Chinese government and African government. 
uh, between 1990s and 2020. What you see if you pay attention to this chart is that in the 1990s, there is no much going between African countries and China. However, starting from the year 2000, you will see there are more trade in between China and many African countries. So much that by 2019, the Chinese exports to Africa was 113 billion US dollars. Why imports from Africa at the same period was more than 78 billion US dollars. With total trade of more than 200 billion dollars, by 2020, China had become the biggest bilateral trade partner with Africa. Now, I want to remind you of what I told you earlier, which is the primary thing a country needs currency for, that is trade. Ah, by now, you must have been seeing the picture of the reason why Africans could, you know, be shifting their attention to the Chinese Yuan. I mean, if you have a continent that is having more than 200 billion US dollars in trade uh, with a single country, it means using the currency of that country might not be a bad idea. So let me give you an example. Let's pretend you are South Africa and you want to import five tons of fish from China. At the same time, the Chinese government needs one ton of gold from your country. Now, the two nations can simply agree, okay, why using dollars? Let's use Chinese Yuan to make this trade. Don't forget what I told you earlier. Uh, one of the things that determines uh, the currency a nation spends is where it takes its debt from. Now, I've been understand that I want to show you this headline, which is from the Economist Time. According to this headline, by 2021, the Chinese government has given more than 148 billion US dollars in loan to different African countries. Since foreign loans are usually paid back with the currency in which it was taken, it is just a common sense that African countries can start thinking of, oh, uh, what if we take our loan in the Chinese Yuan and then we pay it back in the same currency? And if we are going to do that, it means we have to have a part of our foreign reserve in the Chinese Yuan. Can I ask a question? Can I ask a question? Can I ask a question? At this point in the video, somebody may want to ask me, oh, okay, so if African countries or other poor nations of the world are using Chinese Yuan, how can they be sure that what I described earlier, which is the reason why, you know, uh, America dollar is increasing in value and uh, every other local currency of poor country is losing their power, how can these countries be sure that similar things will not happen to them? To answer that question, all you have to see is this Wikipedia chart. You see, this chart shows the most traded currencies of the world. And as you can see, US dollar is by far number one most traded currency of the world. What that means is the US dollar has more demand than any other countries of the world. Why the Chinese Yuan is in number four. However, this does not explain everything we need to know. To really see the total picture, we have to see the percentage of the total daily demand for all of this currency. And then you are going to see that America dollar is having 88% why the Chinese Yuan is having 7% that is out of the daily demand of the currency all over the world. What this means is that the Chinese Yuan is still having far, 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 far low demand among the countries of the world, the government of the world, uh, the companies of the world, compared to the US dollar. Now, at this point in the video, I want to show you this illustration which I told you earlier uh, representing how countries of the world and, you know, different companies and individuals are fighting for dollars. 
now. What happened with Chinese yuan is you have less demand for the currency, and it means that uh, poor countries will have a better chance, relatively, to use Chinese yuan because now they are using a currency that is not having crazy demands. In fact, they have added advantage in the fact that Chinese government intentionally devalue their currency every now and then. I think I will not have time to explain why they do that in this video. But relatively, a poor country will have a better chance at maintaining the value of their currency against Chinese Yuan versus against US dollar. Hence, using such currency might be beneficiary to the country, most especially because most of these countries are now having trade and debt with the Chinese government. But then, there is still another big problem. The two big obstacles many poor countries we have to face when trying to use uh, Chinese Yuan as their foreign reserve currency or trade currency is number one, where if you are pay attention to all of these countries in the past, you understand that most of the times they act as if IMF is their father. Because Practically all of these countries still have to depend on IMF and the World Bank for loan. It means one of the reasons why they need currency, which is debt, will still have to be in large part be carried out in the US dollars. Because of course, IMF or World Bank will never give any African country loan in the Chinese currency. For obvious reason, I mean, this is an organization that is highly influenced by America. Dollars, 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 dollars. The second problem all of these African countries we have is they still have to trade with all of these Western countries who are allies of the US, uh, Australia, Britain, Canada, France, the rest of countries in the Western world. And none of these countries will want to trade with them with the Chinese Yuan. Which means, at the end of the day, a country like, let's say, Ghana may say, oh, we hate the US dollar, so we want to have a part of our currency in the Chinese Yuan. But at the end of the day, they discover that it is not practically possible because they still have to use US dollar to pay their debt, to, to have trade with other Western world, which means they still have a few problems to deal with. Then somebody might say, oh, it means the US dollar will rule the world forever. Uh, uh, unfortunately, at some point, the US dollar has to die. You see, according to researchgate.net, these are countries of the world that have had uh, the world reserve currencies in the past. And as you can see, uh, some of them were able to hold that title for 100 years, some 90 something years. But at the end of the day, each of them has to die, which is similar thing that will happen to the US, only that it might take a whole lot of time than uh, what many people are speculating. But when that happened, three most important things that will happen to the US, uh, especially its citizen, is Number one, what we have discussed in this video, uh, they might lose the power to uh, buy cheap things from everywhere in the world. Number two is suddenly the US might start to have to borrow money with another country's currency, which come with a whole lot of disadvantage that we cannot discuss in this video. And third, uh, generally, any country that is having the most dominant currency is having a whole lot more political influence and power among the nations of the world, uh, which we'll probably talk about later. The US dollar is halting 
virtually all the poor countries of the world because every time the value of dollar increases, the value of the local currency has to decrease, and the buying power of the people in that country uh, reduces, which eventually leads to high inflation and every other disaster in the economy. Uh, why all these countries are looking for left and right, you know, Chinese yuan, gold, and other alternative to dollars, it might still take a whole lot of time uh, before they could have a lasting solution to the currency crisis in these countries.